when we think about inflammation, there's emerging amount, you know, huge amount of research. In fact, you know, I know your father wrote a book called I can't remember Brain Maker, right? All about the gut, gut microbiome, mm -hmm. and how that impacts inflammation, how that impacts brain health. In fact, they call the, the gut the second brain. And there's a lot of research about how the gut microbiome and how intestinal issues, right? A leaky gut, intestinal permeability, how that impacts brain function. Let's talk more about that. Sure. I think it's such a fascinating topic. And if I was going to guess where we'll be in 10, 20 years, it's probably that we'll be able to explain a lot of human behavior by understanding the microbiome, that we are probably less in control than we think, mm -hmm. and the microbes are probably more in control than we think. And there are a number of reasons why I believe that is the case. So just from kind of a statistical perspective, we've got roughly the same number of microbes, specifically bacteria, uh, living on and in us as we do our own cells. I think the latest estimate is around 39 trillion uh, microbes and 39 trillion uh, of our own cells. And then when you expand that, I mean, there's actually a virome, which is 10 times more. We're just starting to learn about this. When it comes to the gut, the majority of the research has been done on these bacteria. And so when you think about the gut, you know, it's this tube that runs from the top to the bottom. The majority of bacteria are concentrated in the large intestine or the colon. That's where the environment is best for them. And we know that this is also a part of the gut where there are a lot of immune cells, where there are a lot of kind of receptors to learn from what is happening in this gut microbiome, all these bacteria hanging out in there. So these gut microbes, these bacteria that live in the GI tract have a ton of different roles, many of which directly relate to our brains. One of the roles that we're now understanding may be essential to both understanding risk for disease and ways to treat disease is the metabolites of microbes. So let's break that down. When we have bacteria that live in our gut, they need to eat like everything else. And what they have access to to eat is either the food that we consume or some of them actually eat a part of our gut lining called mucin, which sounds a little bit gross. It's actually a good thing. One of the bacteria that actually eats this gut lining helps to regenerate the gut lining. It's called Ackermansia mucinophilia because it likes to eat that mucus, that mucin layer. So when bacteria eat whatever they're eating, they produce molecules from that. One class of molecules that they produce are called short chain fatty acids. And now we know that these short chain fatty acids have a number of effects on our physiology. And one of these that have been suggested are effects both on the permeability of the blood brain barrier. So they can actually help to protect our brain, our barrier from what's happening in the bloodstream, which is a good thing. We don't want a leaky blood brain barrier, just like we don't want a leaky gut. But also these short chain fatty acids can uh, influence neuronal health. The health of the brain cells can help to promote neuroplasticity, the rewiring of our brain, and can actually change what's called epigenetic regulation, which is a complicated idea. The bottom line being they may change the way we use our DNA. So here we have a system where the food that we eat changes what bacteria in our gut do and what bacteria in our gut produce changes our brains. That's just one pathway involved. And there are several others we can talk about, but realizing here that this is a constant communication system where our brains are sending signals to our gut, to the microbiome, to the immune system, and our gut is sending signals to our brain by way of these molecules like short chain fatty acids, by way of other molecules that wind up in our bloodstream, by way of the vagus nerve that connects the gut to the brain. There's really just no way to separate these two parts of the body, even though for a long time they were seen as so far away, they couldn't possibly have anything to do with each other. Yeah, really well said. And, and when we have imbalances in our gut bacteria or like a condition called dysbiosis, and if we have overgrowth of certain types of bacteria, you know, I always say bad bacteria or bad, bad microbes in our system they eat nutrients and poop out toxins, and then good bacteria eat toxins and poop out uh, nutrients, right? And, and metabolites and postbiotics that help bring down inflammation. So a lot of it has to do with the, the balance of our microbiome. And then of course, what we're feeding that, that those, the, the microbiome as well. Mm -hmm.